Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cosplay Fabric Spring 2023 launch. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes uh, to join and uh, for stragglers to, to come in before I start presenting all the fabrics to you. But um, I really appreciate you spending this Thursday night with me. I'm already seeing some familiar faces. Hi, Cassie. Thanks so much for stopping by. Starfall Cosplay. I see Kuro Senpai. Hi. Um, so yeah, I've been doing these uh, live streams for a few years now with Cosplay Fabrics because um, every year we have the wonderful opportunity to present two collections of fabrics um, to Joanne uh, Fabrics and Crafts. And uh, you guys, um, if you're here, you probably have used some of my fabrics, in which case, thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much, Scott, for being here. Michael Mason, thank you for all your previous fabrics. I use them all the time. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful. So yeah, while people are coming in, I just wanna give a shout out to Cosplay Fabrics for partnering with me. Uh, believe it or not, we are entering our seventh year of um, making fabrics. It's crazy. We The first collection dropped in 2016. So um, I also want to thank Co Joanne for obviously carrying this line and making, you know, these really crazy fabrics available to all of you. Um, I am supported today by the team behind Cosplay Fabrics. They're going to be answering questions and also, you know, just helping me of uh, being aware of certain things that you guys want to know. So feel free to put questions in the comments um, as I show the fabrics, and then I will try to answer some of them. And then also we might have a chance to get to know some of the beautiful trims that are behind me, because if you know, aside from a fabric line, I also have a collection of cosplay trims in Joanne stores. And we just did a reset in uh, September, which means we brought in a whole new um, collection of trims and um, I haven't even talked about them yet so I want to show them to you guys anyway um, thank you Sean that's such a nice comment and I see JM Garcia from Mexico City wow thank you so much guys uh, all righty so are you guys ready do you want to do you want to see some fabrics <laughs> I I should say that um this collection is a little bit smaller than previous collections because the way that these fabrics are chosen and um, then produced for the stores, it, it takes a whole year. So this time around in 2022, when we made the selection for this collection, uh, it was a very different place, right? Like conventions weren't all that back yet. And we, you know, it's like there, there just wasn't as much going on cosplay wise. However, this smaller collection is pretty special and I hope you will like them. And then I want you to know that, you know, your buying power is what determines the direction of this collection. So hopefully we uh, we just had a meeting with the Joanne buyers last week, actually, and I hope I convinced them that cosplay is back with the vengeance. And, you know, conventions are busier than ever. We are craftier than ever. So I'm hoping that what they select for 2024 is going to be an even wider, bigger selection. So let's hope for it. All right. Serenity Cage says, I'm ready. OK, then let's go. So. I have a little spreadsheet here so I can make sure to tell you the fabrics that I am going to be discussing. So the first one is off the get off the bat. It's a crazy one. This is a neon high gloss leather. So it is a very nice quality vinyl and the color is what makes this really special, I think. I have wanted to do more vinyls. We've done them in black and red, you know, but um, primary colors. But I wanted to do a green because you guys have been asking for a green. So I think we have a video that shows the color a little better because, you know, my home studio kind of veers a bit green, uh, a bit blue. So you can see from the video here, it's a really nice, like, lime green. It truly is like a true lime green. Of course, it is four-way stretch. 
And it is in fact the type of vinyl that looks almost like latex. So it reads like latex, it stretches like latex. It's very important that the backing is the same color as the um, finish. Um, that has been always really important to me. And um, as you can see, it is super nice. It's backed on a knit, so uh, it's very, very comfortable. So I hope you guys will use this for lots of anime costumes. Give me some JoJo or One Piece. <laughs> hope you like them. A Angel says, perfect for our Poison Ivy cosplay. Yep, definitely the animated, you know, Gotham uh, Sirens. Yep, Poison Ivy. There you go. I just, I love vinyl that looks like latex because latex is hard to care for and can be uncomfortable, but vinyl breathes better, but it looks, you know, like latex looks so cool. So we definitely try to go for that look. Anyway, okay, we're going to move on to a collection that we're expanding colors in. Again, the, it's going to look different on my screen. This is the classic pleather. So we have a video for this as well. It's a pink. Um, it's a very true pink, very like Gwen Stacy pink. And um, also, yeah, could th this could actually also work for a My Hero Academia. I know um, Tisha said that the green is sort of like a variant froppy, but this is totally, you know, um, could also work for my hero. So this fabric, the classic pleather, it is four-way stretch and it is very thin, again, backed on the same color. Uh, so it's not like it has a white backing or black backing. Um, I have been trying to, like we, we at Cosplay Fabrics and Me, we really have been trying to find the right ratio for rubberized fabrics because the Ultra Prem, as much as I loved it and still love it, it is very thick. So it is a bit more difficult to wear. Uh, thicker means, you know, hotter. And so I really like this pleather because even though it is thin, it is very durable. We definitely splurged on a high quality. As you can see, I have like sharp nails and I'm like punch, you know, it's like you can't punch through it and it's not transparent either. So I like thinner pleathers nowadays because I, when I'm like making bodysuits or gloves, I make them really tight. And so uh, around your elbows, around your knees, it ends up can be kind of uncomfortable if the fabric is really thick. So um, a thinner fabric means that you'll be more comfortable, but you definitely should play around with it, go into the stores, check it out. Um, and I guarantee you're going to like it. We also have it in a beautiful yellow, um, really a true golden yellow, which I think is fantastic. And I've been wanting to bring in um, my, I actually wanted yellow and orange. So they, they chose the yellow. So I'm like, maybe next time I'll get the orange in. But um, it is, you know, as you can see, still backed on the same color and uh any x-men costumes i mean hello because we besides the yellow we are also doing the classic pleather in a blue so there you go x-men's assemble no they don't assemble how do, how do x-men assemble <laughs> but um the blue and the yellow they are very true colors and we definitely had superheroes in mind for these um but of course you can also use them for anime costumes video game costumes any color block character if you want to make the character's outfit look more interesting make it in pleather <laughs> very nice all right so how do you guys how do you guys think so far <laughs> Starfall Cosplay says, I need that blue for Bombshell Raven. Absolutely, yes. Um, we also have a purple that is um, from a previous collection that is still in stores and should be online. It's going to basically be available until they run out of yardage. So if you might be able to find the purple as well. Anyway... So yeah, I, I agree. The colors are a nice variety because uh, for a really long time, it was mainly just like primary colors. And I'm like, I know that, you know, 
um, black cells and red cells, but like, let's bring in some different colors. Anyway, all right, let's move on. Uh, let's move on to the brocades. Because <laughs> I know many, many of you love the brocades. They are also some of my favorite fabrics. And we over the years have been able to build really good relationships with factories to create very, very, very interesting, nice brocades. It's been a ongoing process. And I have to say like the the team behind Cosplay Fabrics, they, I appreciate them so much because they've always listened to me. They've always like, we're so open to improving. They've really also listened to the community. Like um, they have a lot of other products in the market, a lot of other things that they deal with, but they've always made cosplay, like the cosplay fabrics, you know, a, a special mission, I think, and really gotten to know cosplay. So I think that over the years, we've really been able to do some great things with cosplay. So the first brocade, I'm so excited about this one. It is a Celtic textured brocade. Look at it. Just look at it in its glory. Can you see? It is a dark green black with a bronzed um, metallic gold texture. And the Celtic symbols are raised. So there's a 3D effect. And I have definitely been wanting to present more of, you know, sort of um, culture and mythology. I'm so glad that they bought this one. Uh, we, of course, presented different ones. And so we only got one in this time, but hopefully it does well and they're going to want to buy more of this type of fabric but i just think it's so striking you know obviously if uh you're working on anything merida related or you know you're doing anything based on a uh norse um mythology or even like thor ragnarok anything mm -hmm. and uh I just think it would be gorgeous for men's wear, for women's wear, for cape, for anything. Um, the other great part is this is the backside, and the backside looks just as nice as the front. So the front has the raised texture, the backside is flatter. So if you prefer to use the backside, go for it. And also, if you make a cape or a open robe, something that where or sleeves where you can see on the inside. You don't need to line it with anything because it looks fantastic on both sides. Someone said God of War. There you go. <laughs> so really, really excited. Hopefully you guys will make some beautiful things with it. All right. Cassie said big Loki, Loki vibes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Jasmine is just like my money. Yes. Buy it up so they will get more. <laughs> All right. Um... Scott says, expanded universe, Jedi Knight tunics. That would be a hell of a Jedi Knight tunic for sure. Um, <laughs> LJ's like, oh, gee, that's sexy. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, LJ. And hi, Caleb. Anyway, next fabric. I love this one so much. This is the green on gold brocade. And it has a leaf pattern in the style of Art Deco. Once again, we presented a lot of Art Deco fabrics. I really, really think that as, you know, just as a society, we are kind of really leaning into Art Deco now. It's been like, you know, it's 100 years later. It makes sense. But look at this beautiful pattern. It is stylized, yet still very recognizable as a leaf. So you have options. You can definitely use it for fashion outfits, art deco style, you can definitely use it in, you know, for an elegant character that maybe has a green outfit, but you want the green to have some texture to it. Definitely reads a little bit Lord of the Rings, right? Elvin. Um, the back also looks really beautiful. Again, a lot of our fabrics, we try to make them so you can use the front or the back. It's giving Pokemon vibes. 
<laughs> yes, yes. Make like a really beautiful Hannah Alexander Pokemon. Go for it. Go make, make a beautiful Leafeon. There you go. So I just love this fabric so much. In fact, um, if you know, if you follow Desi Desu, she is making a Art Deco Loki with this fabric right now. We actually, you know, sent her some ahead of time uh, because I showed her like a preview and she fell in love with it and she had like a specific project in mind. So go check out De Desi Desu Cosplay's uh, process on Loki. She will showcase this fabric so much better than me just holding it up. <laughs> so you'll see it like, you know, sewn into a dress. <laughs> All right, are you guys excited? This is nice. Um, as I said, hopefully we'll be able to get more variety and be able to go into these styles more but as you can see i'm really leaning into fantasy historical with different um, mythologies so in the same vein i yeah keep throwing out in the comments like what characters you would want to make i i definitely i want to read all of those and i just want to you know i, I just love it and Sarah says it's so smart. <laughs> I love the use of negative and positive shapes of the design. Yes, absolutely. We're there. <laughs> anyway, this next fabric is super versatile. It is the braided texture brocade. So again, it is an abstract uh, pattern that is repeating and it's sort of it is very luxurious looking. It could be used for um you know, a statement piece, or you could cut it up and use it as a trim for a sleeve, you know, just accent pieces. And the pattern is small enough that even when you cut smaller pieces, such as for a corset or a bodice, you can use it. In the video, it reads um, silver, but it is actually a gold. It is a very soft gold. So again, we're not going for glaringly yellow or anything but sort of very antiqued gold. The backside is just as beautiful. Like this is the backside. Can you believe that? Like, I just, I'm just like, let's make fabrics where we don't have to put lining in. <laughs> or we can... So the front and the back. Now I'm like, I like presenting this and then just seeing what you guys, what you guys say. I see Sith Disney villain. Yes. Oh my God, I've seen a lot of friends, Melinda. Hope, hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here. This is perfect for the husband assassin cosplay that he's building. Yes, Assassin's Creed. There you go. So um, no lining, yes, I know, right? And uh, LG says, I can definitely see this for armor. It is, um, so it's a woven. It doesn't have a stretch to it, but it is medium weight. So if you used it on the bias, which means you use it kind of diagonally across, you know, it does have a little bit of stretch. That's sort of the magic of woven fabrics. If you cut on the bias diagonally, you can get a little stretch out of it. But yeah, you can, uh, Wakanda, absolutely. There you go, Wakanda. Um, we definitely thought about a lot of influences and, but then like in the collections, we present a lot of different ones. I hope what they chose is, you know, going to be, soothing for you guys and i hope we can definitely continue driving in that direction silhouette cosplay hi thanks for being here okay my loki heart is like yes there's at least two fabrics here that would be great for loki please please go for it in fact contact us we'll send you some so all right um let's see kyle hi and jessica Thanks for being here. I see Tony. Oh my gosh, you guys are all so sweet. Hi, Jess. Uh, Jess says it's going to be so useful for embellishing basic designs. Yes, definitely. Like I have been thinking very much in the direction of fabrics that are very, have pizzazz, but read enough like a solid color. So hopefully we'll get more of that. All right, now, next up we have Let's see, we have some stretch fabrics coming up. I wanna make sure that I am on the right page. Um, so one of our best sellers for years has been animal print. So every collection, Joanne buys some animal print. I 
am cool with animal print, but I always tell them buy the interesting animal prints. So I'm really glad they chose this one. This is the distressed metallic uh, animal print. It is full stretchy. And I think the pattern is universal enough that it could be used for a lot of different things. Um, it feels really good. It's nice and thin. It is definitely very thin, but um, has very nice stretch to it. I just think the sort of the, the sort of there's like a little bit of an embossed effect to it and the metallic alongside with the pattern is really cool. Uh, Maddie says you could make some slick Jojo costumes with this. Definitely. Oh yeah. The next one is also very Jojo. <laughs> so we definitely can't like, I've been sort of going, we want to do historical fantasy, right? But we also want to keep pushing into you know, futuristic crazy. So Mounting Mirror, hi, and Tyler, and you guys are all here. Thank you so much for being here. Love you guys. Um, this next one is a trip. <laughs> Hold on, let's see if I can make it big and really trip out the monitor. Whoa! This is the uh, foil dot. So do we say JoJo? <laughs> do we say like, I don't know? futuristic robot space suit sort of campy retro sci-fi um i'm definitely very in love with this fabric and i can see why they why they chose it because it's like a fabric like this is going to be so eye-catching in the store very nice and stretchy feels really good on your skin so as you can see like if i just made like a little sleeve with it look how nice like the the dot sort of give you this um, visual effect. So I feel like it would be really slimming if you made like a bodysuit with this. Look how slimming this would be. <laughs> so I might make a pair of leggings with this. And um, it's of course holographic because I can't get enough of holographic and um, you guys seem to also love it. Jinx Cosplay says, I love the dots. Yeah, it's just very bold. I'm serious. Somebody make something from JoJo with this, please. <laughs> Very club kid. Hi, Pantarona. Uh, oh, yeah. A few few of you have said Six, the musical. When I was in London, I saw it advertised in all the tube stations, and I wanted to get tickets. Didn't have time. Definitely want to see it. But I thought, like, a lot of the costumes in, in Six, I'm like... They look very like the trims that they use and such, um, like the the studded trims. I'm like, that's very familiar. <laughs> so must wonder. Sarah says no such thing as too much hollow. That's the truth. Holographic. Alrighty. So we do have a couple more um, really fun fabrics. So I don't know. Have you guys seen? You've seen House of the Dragon, right? Did you see that Damon? Targaryen was like wearing my studded pleather <laughs> for most of the show. I was like, he kept showing up with the same like um, the, the doublet, like after two different time skips. He wore that thing for like seven, seven, eight years. I was like, yes, yes, very good. Anyway, so we have another studded pleather for you. We're calling this one the Ray's Texture Pleather. So that's how you're going to find it on the Joanne website. But Look at this, all black this time. Very uniform, uniform small pyramid studded um, raised texture. It's very elegant, I think. So for all your, you know, D and D costumes, you know, make something House of Dragon with it, please. And Matthew's like, was that your pleather? Yes, it was my pleather. They used it like diagonally. So uh, it, it it took me a second, but yeah. Um, everybody's saying Witcher, Geralt, I agree 100%. Um, this fabric does stretch. This is the, the difference between the, the other studded pleather and this one. Look at this. It stretches. So make pants with it. Make, I don't know, like a sexy bodysuit with it. <laughs> make arm bracers with it stretch it over foam or warbler and make armor with it i'm and i think like we took your 
you know, your comments from um, back then when we did the other Stutter Pleather is that some of you said wish it was um, stretchy. So I'm really glad that we were able to, whoa, my camera. I'm just really glad that we're able to um, get to a point where we could get a factory to make this. So it is only two way stretch, but I think that's enough, right? <laughs> so, um, Mad Max, yes, it's a new style trench coat. Yes, uh, thank you, Tyler. Um, I think stretch is definitely still like the way to go, but there are some wovens that I certainly swear by. Uh, speaking of which, speaking of stretch, we have the last piece in our 2023 spring collection. It's a tan animal print with stretch. This one has a lot of Star Wars vibes to me. So there is a subtle, very subtle animal print, like, like a pebbled uh, skin print on it, but it is almost matte. And uh, as a result, because this fabric stretches so well, it is a four-way stretch. I feel like you can definitely do a lot of different uses for it. So sometimes subtle is good. As you can see how it catches the light, even like on my webcam. Can you imagine, you know, seeing this in person and then photographing it with a nice camera? Um, of course, this can also be dyed. It is on a really nice, like, uh, faux suede backing. It's very comfortable against your skin. And I'm just like, I can just see this being used for, you know, any type of robes or... Um, I mean, deserty, you know, I mean, my God, go, go for it. All your Star Wars cosplayers, um, ground and rock Pokemon cosplay. Yes, I agree. Melting mirror. Very nice. <laughs> Pantronas would be perfect for my Lion King cosplay. Yes. Oh my God. I would love for you to use this. Please, please use this. <laughs> that would be amazing. So I see, I like, we think about certain things when we, you know, design fabrics and we're like, people are gonna use it for that. But then I do a live and I see your reaction and you give me so many more ideas. Like you guys are so creative with um, imagining what you can use it for. So I want in the future, as much as I can, be able to share even upcoming fabrics for you and just like gauge your reactions and such. So really, really appreciate you guys giving me feedback. This could be used for Vampire Hunter D nice uh so yeah we have the collection this is like all the new fabrics that are coming through but uh, they also rebought three fabrics from previous collections so these you're going to see more of in store so i'm just going to go through them real quick uh we did this holographic stripe last time and um it sold really well you guys really love this one. So they have rebought it and it will be in stores again. Sorry, my can't this this holographic stripe and my camera, they don't agree very well. But yes, look at the video. So it's super, super cool. It's sort of a trip to look at it. Um, it's nice and stretchy and also on a very comfortable black backing. So I think it will have lots of uses for definitely like futuristic sci-fi outfits and also crossover in fashion. I think part of why, like, look how nice it drapes. Like you can make like a slinky dress with this too. Like just something about the way it drapes is really awesome. Mass Effect and Alien, yes, nice. Mako says that's perfect for my Genova. Very cyberpunk, absolutely. So I almost wish I could have used this in my Lucy costume because it it was so neat. Uh, would be cool for a cape. I know, like sometimes I like draping, you know, stretchy fabrics. I think it's really, really cool. All right, now the other rebuy, I hope they will continue to buy this. This is the light blue floral satin brocade. This is one of my personal favorite fabrics. I've been 
it's like it sells so well that I've been asking for me personally to get sample yardage of it, and I can't get more than one yard. So if I want to use this fabric, I have to buy it myself because I, as a designer, can't get sample yardage because it sells so much. But it's one of the most beautiful fabrics I think we have ever made. And the really cool part is that it is a brocade, but we print on top of it. So that's what makes this fabric so special because you have the chrysanthemums that are printed, uh, that are woven into the fabric. But then on top of it, you have these beautiful bursts of flowers that are printed. So this is a um, newer textile technology that we definitely want to do more in. Um, I'm hoping that by proving to them that, you know, this fabric is popular enough that you can, that they're rebuying it, that we can do more like it. So um, I personally have wanted to make a Han Fu robe with this for over a year. So if I can find six yards of it, <laughs> then I'll make a robe with it. But it's so pretty. It's so beautiful. Uh, Terry says, love that fabric from your preview before and was never able to find it. I know you, it just reset. So all the fabrics that I am showing you today, they should have arrived in your local stores now. They should be available now. You should go this weekend, grab your favorites. <laughs> and um, they also should be available on the Joanne website. So, ease. <laughs> Cassie says perfect for Han Fu. Yes, absolutely. I'm it's like there definitely is like the Asian, it's like there's the Asian influence, but also it could also work for like a Western um Regency type gown. All right. <laughs> Kuro is like off to Joanne's now. Thank you. Yes. Uh all right. So the last fabric that they rebought, um, I feel like I'm really relieved, and I hope some of you agree. It's the distressed pleather. It's one of our top selling fabrics from the last uh, season. And it is a fantastic leather substitute. So make arm bracers with it. It is like, it looks like upholstery fabric, but it is softer than upholstery fabric. So it will wear a lot easier. It will drape a lot easier. So Definitely, definitely pick up some of this fabric because I guarantee you will use it for something. And now that they rebought it, I think it's going to go pretty fast. So like some people actually go like buy a whole bolt, but look at just, it's fantastic. So just like it drapes so nice, feels really comfy, but looks seriously like, like leather. So alrighty. What do you think? Those are all the fabrics that are coming to your stores. Now, I'm gonna take a drink of water. <laughs> I don't even know what time it is. Okay, we still have time, good. So, oh, Christian, thank you so much for the wonderful comment. Um, so I thought, while I have all the fabrics here, I wanna show you guys, um, some of the trims that we have in stores now, because I think some of you may not know that we put in new trims. So I wanna show you how you can use some of the fabrics and the trims together. So let me make some room. I have my mannequin with me. Oh my God, I have like a pile of fabrics. Look at this. This is, this is the reality of doing like a fabric showcase. You end up with just a pile. <laughs> Oh, Sarah, oh, thank you so much. It's a true team effort for all of us and it's such a pleasure. So I'm I'm just, it's really nice for me too. So anyway, so I have my mannequin with me. So I'll show you guys some of the, um, so as you can see, I have the braided um, texture brocade just pinned on. Let's see if I can move my light a bit. And as
Is my mic still dead? No. Ah, I'm so sad. Let me see if I can fix it. Yeti. Okay. Uh, you can hear me. Yeah, I don't. Mm, my my Yeti mic is not very happy with me. I'm also kind of cramped in here, so let's see if I can move it a tad. I think I hit it. Anyway, so this is I don't know how much you guys heard, but this is a braided um, the braided trim, and it is a pleather trim that you like it's open on both sides so you can literally like sew fabric directly onto it so it'd be really fantastic for you know um adding a visually interesting strip or you can use it as a belt or you can uh fold it over and sort of like either glue it down or uh sew it down and you would have and like a beautiful edge like this. So this is comes in black and brown. Um, see another like really, like we have some really cool trims that I think you guys would really like. Things that would, you know, work really well for an outfit like this, just to add some visual interest. This is the, um, what is it called? It's like a, a cross wait there's a there's a name for it because we named all of these yes this is the lace-up trim in black so it would make it for a really nice elegant edge i don't know if you guys can see this but i love that it's see-through so you can put it on top of something and that it's pleather so um just seeing what you guys are saying hi candace thanks for being here, um, we also have come out with some fur trims because I hate sewing, like cutting fur. Uh, so this is a sew on trim. So it has a edge to it if you want it to help you sew it on. And, um, you know, if you wanted to leave it on, it looks really nice. Uh, or you can kind of fold it over and put it at the edge of something. So I think that is really nice too. So this fur trim comes in dark brown and light brown. Hold on. Let's see. Just to show you the color difference. So I think they're really nice. So yeah, I think this this could just really save a lot of time, <laughs> you know, for you to not. It's really soft too. My gosh, now that I'm like on it. It feels really, really soft to your face. So nice fur. Um, so let me show you some blingy trims or so I'm just going to kind of drape this fabric over it. Don't mind me. It's just going to look kind of silly. But so if you had, for example, a really pretty <laughs> like a ferret, Anthony, <laughs> <laughs> Caleb says begging to be used for an Atreus cosplay. Um, let's see. So we have some really beautiful, elegant fantasy trims. I'll start with uh, one of our favorites. This is the the princess um, crystal, the crystal princess trim that we've done in blue and red. And now we're doing it in gold. So this is just blam huge statement trim uh and also i have cut it up and just like used it as you know as like jewelry embellishments before so i've literally like cut it up and put two back to back so that it became like a jewelry piece and um this is a iron-on trim so it is a uh, heat activated through an iron. And I mean, it's like, I know some of you definitely have used a princess trim before. So this is like, yeah, if you want to fancy up your Genshin costume, go for it. <laughs> Certainly, definitely for Sailor Moon cosplayers. And I think the gold will be really, really nice. So yeah, Sarah says, oh, dance or fire emblem three houses. Yes, yes, I love it. And 
We definitely are, in terms of crystal trim, we also have this twisted crystal trim that is very elegant. Definitely, you know, um, something that can be used for a lot of different types of outfits or even fashion. So it's also an iron-on. It's like a twisted crystal. And I like... I'm like, I wish I had had this when I was trying to make KDA Ari, you know, anything like that. So uh, we also have some pearlescent trims. I just, I think it's really nice to either do really like big statement trim or something that is more understated and just sort of adds like a, some elegance to your costume. This is pearls. I don't know if this will show up actually. <laughs> um, However, this probably will show. This is like a really beautiful sort of Zakizo inspired trim. And um, look at this. And I think you can definitely even cut it up and use it as emblems, you know, em embellishments, applique embellishments. And uh, also very Genshin Impact, right? Because <laughs> everything is, or Zelda, everything is sort of like, going in that direction. It's all Art Nouveau and Art Deco inspired, by the way, all of those. So I think that's very beautiful. We, ooh, let me show you some, let me show you some really big fancy ones. So this is probably the widest trim that we have ever done. Uh, we're calling it the Bianca. I don't know, is my mic still? I feel like I'm gonna hit my mic. <laughs> So this is the Bianca trim. Look at this. Look how wide it is. It's like, it has like no chill, this trim. <laughs> I'll use it as a mask. I'll make like a headpiece with it. There you go. <laughs> but uh, I think this is just great for the hem of a skirt. My gosh. Or sleeves. I mean... It's just fantastic. And it comes in silver and gold. So I love these. <laughs> so I know, look at that. Uh, Kirli, hi. Oh my God, you're from Australia. What time is it over there? Um, you say at the bottom of a Cinderella's gown. Yes, yes. So use a Joanne coupon, definitely. Um, can the trims be dyed? Yeah, absolutely. They can be dyed with polyester dyes. Uh, you can, I've also like painted trims before. Like if I wanted to add a color or change this color to be more, you know, reddish in tone, more of a bronze, whatever, I would just dilute um, acrylic paint and just dab, sponge it on, dab it on. But there are definitely lots of, lots of ways to use these so i don't know if you guys knew that we had all these trims in joanne stores like uh for example i wish that we could have gotten this a few years ago like the height of game of thrones cosplay like everybody that had to make daenerys's belt because <laughs> uh this does come in a gold so I swear to God, I think I would have made that dress if I could have gotten my hands on this trim. <laughs> like, this is the cutout metallic trim, but it's so pretty. I just, I just love how big of a statement piece it is. <laughs> just as my friend made that belt with super glue. Yeah, right? So, I mean, I just think this is, just so fun. And I don't know, I would maybe like, you could even like put, you could sew like multiple together and make like a cool bodice or something. So, yee. Oh my gosh, am I gonna screw my mic up again? I'm running out of room, help. I need some of this. I don't know what for, but it will be used. I know, I love you, Melinda. Um, Let's see. 
speaking of fancy trims, uh, you guys know this one. We've been doing this one in um, silver and gold, and now we're doing it in black. So very evil queen, very, you know, just begs to be put at the edge of a sleeve or the end of a skirt. Let's see if I can take this down for a second. Um, and show this to you guys a little better. I need this for my alu card. Yeah, it's like very dramatic, you know, so maybe don't use it like this, but you know, around the edge. Mako says I used the gold. Yeah, for sure. So like it, it did well enough that we uh, did it in black and just like very classic teardrop shape, you know, is really nice. Um, I hear, I see Victorian Gothic. Let's see. Speaking of, um, speaking of other embellishments, we have an iridescent jewel. That is a really big statement piece. So that's something that you can sew on. It's a sew on trim uh not not a trim but just like a really big emblem so for any like princesses and anything i mean you can imagine it could go anywhere <laughs> uh and i'm really excited that this time here i'm gonna move my mannequin a bit because she is crowding into my space so we also did finally some mermaid ruffles i used to try to hunt for something like this, uh, especially when I was making my um, Granado Espada costume. I needed like pleated trim like this. It was so hard to find. So I'm really happy that we were able to bring some in stores. And we have this gorgeous, I mean, look at that. Look at, look how well it reads just on this webcam. Oh my God, I love this. <laughs> I want to just... <laughs> Put it everywhere. Kokomi, yes. Yes, right? Like very. Uh, but it also comes in red. So totally different vibe. Just a different color, but look at the vibe. The vibe is totally different now. So it's more like La Senora. <laughs> but nice, deep blood red. Man. I'm really amazed by how well these photograph. I'm I'm gonna have to find a project. Woo, maybe I, I could use it for my for my next Han Fu, for my wedding Han Fu. Should I do some ruffles for Xielian? Wedding Xielian. Some ooh. Maybe I'll do that. Water fire bending. Yes. Uh, and then it also comes in a black that has an iridescent strip through it. So it's sort of like reads almost like green so this is definitely some of my favorite trims that we've done so like i love this i'm just playing with ruffles now like the cosplay fabrics team is probably like what are you doing <laughs> sorry i'm just um oh yeah speaking of pleated trims i know we all want crazy crazy trims but sometimes you just need a really good black pleated trim this is like a matte black, really delicately pleated and has it's see-through. So I think this just is sort of a staple, you know, all the Lolitas, all the whatever. I mean, just so many things that you can use this for. And we kind of went with a matte look for this one because sometimes you want it to be in your face and sometimes you need the materials to be more subdued, right? <laughs> All right, so the last trim I'll show you, and then we can take questions and I can look at the comments because I have not even looked at, I'm just like in this crazy mess, is I just wanted to show you guys that we're doing another corset trim. I just think these are so great for accents. And we did this in black, so we're doing one in uh, brown. Anything that is a lighter color, of course, means that it can be painted, it can be, you know, you know, potentially dyed, a, a, darker and different color and so i think it's really good to have it in like a true brown um so there's lacing running through it so you can 
potentially use this to actually lace up, you know, a sleeve or a doublet or something. But I just think this is super duper useful. So here we have it. I'm in a crazy mess. You should see my room right now. Maybe I'll post a picture of it. But um, that was a good run through of my spring 2023 fabrics. And you guys got to see some of my new trims in stores. All of them, the items that I just showed are in stores now. So get them, make me proud, make something gray with them. So much easier to not have to do all those eyelids. Absolutely. 100,000%. A bazillion gazillion eyelids. <laughs> Tyler says I use that for venti. Yes. Um, I tried asking it to ship to Canada. I, I thought that Joanne updated their shipping system to be international now. Unfortunately, we have no control over where they ship to. It's been like... Mm. It's been like this ongoing thing of like, we make fabrics and then it's up to them to distribute it. And, you know, they obviously have a like a very complicated system because they ship so many different items from so many warehouses and such. But it is, you know, like I, I wish I could just bring the fabrics to everybody. I do. And I hope maybe in the future we'll be able to. But I, I do really appreciate you guys, you know using them and being here to support me. I see Allie. Hi, Allie. Thanks for coming by. Um, so yeah, I have time for some questions if you guys have them. I saw earlier there was a question about my EVA phone. And I've been definitely like, I feel like I should maybe just address it since I'm talking to over a hundred of you. Uh, so I of course had the um, Yai Han branded EVA foam in Joanne stores since, was it 2019, 2018? And uh, we took a really long time to research and to choose the right density. Um, and they did very well, um, but as of, um, mid last year or late last year, Joanne started to carry their own branded EVA foam. So if you guys have like not seen my EVA foam is because it's sold out and now they're selling their own private label, I think it's called Top Notch or something. Um, so I've tried a little bit of it. I played around with it. It is not as dense as my foam. So it makes me a little question I question a little bit about the durability of of it however you know it's definitely not up to me what they carry in stores I was very grateful that they had my foam in there for a few few years but if you guys want to see my foam come back then the one thing that you can do is uh, if you have used the top notch the Joanne branded foam you can leave leave an honest review about it and you can share your comments and thoughts about it there because they do pay attention to reviews a lot. So that's like even a better way than trying to message them through social media or something because the first thing that they look at uh, about how a product is doing is the reviews on the product on joanne.com. So that's definitely a way that you could, you know, like, and truly like we're, we're not asking, telling you to say anything that you don't feel like. But if you guys wanted to know why my foam is gone, that's why. So, um, and yes, for those in Australia and New Zealand, Spotlight does still carry the EVA foam. Thank you so much, Spotlight. We appreciate you. And so you guys can still definitely get it there. I went, the foam was great, sad to see it go. I know I'm definitely sad to see it go too. I'm, I'm more like worried that people might buy the, the, the new foam thinking it was mine. And then, you know, like it, it just, it's just different. So, <clears throat> but thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Like I said, I can hang out for a little bit and answer questions or just chat with you guys, but you know, I don't know. I don't go live enough. So I'm like, am I, I don't know. Look at my beautiful Dunmay collection in the background. 
<laughs> so William says, I learned a lot here today. Yeah, absolutely. It is, you know, it's like there's a lot behind the scenes. Let's say it's a complicated system that I am a small part in. But I, over the years, I, I like, I think at the beginning, the first few years, I really wasn't too sure myself how certain things worked. And I was also really afraid of sharing information because um, I didn't want to overstep or something. But the more I think about it, it's like you as the customers and the buyers, you, you're, you're the people that need to know the information. Like you need to know that certain items are not there anymore, you know, instead of wondering what happened to them, or you need to know how the sort of the cycling through of the collections go. It's like when we bring new fabrics in, it's not certain that they're going to stay, you know, they're there for one season. And then the ones that do really well, they get rebought. And then we have a growing selection of um, a line that we call the basics line of the absolute best selling fabrics that they will replenish year round. But that is only a small number of SKUs, a small number of types and colors of fabrics. And so we've always been wanting to expand upon that because we know as cosplayers, if you find a fabric that works for a certain thing, you want to use it forever. You know, like you don't have to hunt anymore. That's your go-to fabric. And I think like um, in mass retail, there's always that thought of it needs to be something new. And, you know, that's not just in crafts. It's also in fashion. It's in every industry. So it's always about like bringing new things in. So we want to try to balance it and really steer the Joanne uh, buyers in the right direction of like, I'm, I want to give them confidence, you know, I want it to be like, these are fabrics that people are going to buy no matter what. So you should confidently keep them in your stores. And then we can, with every new season, bring new fabric, something really exciting and different, um, but balance it with the tried and true fabrics that everybody, you know, just goes to so yeah here's a little banner to show you like what is in the basics line and hopefully we can add to it and you know also update it improve upon it um um what are the future sewing pattern plans i love hunt well i'm glad that you uh you enjoy the hanfu pattern that is a different company. <laughs> it's a whole other story, has its whole other set of problems. Um, very, very interesting. But of course, I hope to bring new patterns, but it uh, I probably won't speak about it here because it, it is, you know, it is not sadly as related to cosplay fabrics as I would like. <clears throat> but I'm I'm glad that you guys still like the patterns, you know, like they definitely also discontinued some patterns that I think they should have kept. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a different, it's a different stream, different conversation. <clears throat> um, were there any previous fabrics you would like to bring back Priscilla? Ah, of course, of course. I, I think like, for me, it's, it's, definitely the the desires there to expand on the best types of fabrics and expand them in different colorways and unfortunately i will never like i will never get you know a um a, a hexagon you know like scuba hex line in five different colors it's not going to happen you know it's like they've been carrying the black and white for years but once upon a time we made a red and we could have made it we can still make it in other colors but you know like i just i guess wish that i could just you know pick out the best fabrics truly the best ones that i have beat up and i have used the hell of that i see people using again and again like i want to have a rainbow collection of those in stores that's never gonna happen but we can definitely still fight for the fabrics to be in there and to give you guys options. Like the scuba hex does come in white, which can be dyed in whatever color you want. 
uh, or certain fabrics can be painted and manipulated and such. So um, it is it is uh, an ongoing ongoing journey. It's like it's definitely like challenging, but also really uh, stimulating creatively because uh, I am like always trying to think what it is that people would love. What what have they never seen before? Um, and so last week during the presentation, we showed some incredible fabrics. I mean, I was just salivating at the mouth. There, there are so many where I was just freaking out and want to use immediately, um, but we have to wait. We have to be patient and hope that they pick them um, so that we can make many, many, many yardage for all of you. <laughs> Flashback to the mad gold stretch. Ah, I knew <laughs> and everyone you knew buying it by the fold. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I think I remember that. <clears throat> what was the crazy, craziest like combo pattern type of fabric? <clears throat> um, I've used all kinds of fabrics. I've like fused fabrics together. I think it's always uh, interesting to layer one stretch fabric over another stretch fabric. Or I have made um, a corset where the inner layer was cotille. So it's like very rigid woven, doesn't move at all. But then the outer layer was a stretchy knit, like a uh, heavy duty scuba. So I had to make the outer layer smaller so that it could stretch over the inner layer. And it left me with a very seamless corset, but it was such a pain in the ass. So just like trying to do the math and hoping it will fit. Um, and also doing a like grommets in um, fabric that's stretchy. Like you have to literally sew a, sew a seam so that the fabric doesn't stretch away from the hole that you're punching and all of those things I had to learn. Uh, definitely any sequin fabrics, like heavy duty sequin fabrics, like the cape I uh, did for my evil queen. It... Um, very hard to sew, you know, even using a leather needle and being very careful, you break needles because of the beading and sequins on it and everything. So um, I'm reading some of your comments. Oh, thank you, Ruby. Yeah, it's been super rewarding. And I, I just really hope that, you know, you guys can find some use for this collection and you can show through your buying power that they should buy, you should they should get more selection in there. So hopefully the next collection will be even bigger. <laughs> so I've got a small hoard of the stretch matte gold. Yeah, I definitely hoard certain black pleathers and um, definitely all the gold. So I do wish we could offer more variety <laughs> in, in that area more silvers you know silver doesn't get used as much as gold believe it or not you would think so but it it just doesn't so hopefully <laughs> all right i think i might end the stream soon but i was thinking i could hop on instagram live just for a few minutes um to continue chatting if you guys want to continue chatting over there just want to kind of you know say hi to everybody over there since I'm all set up but um I definitely really appreciate you guys being here and I love reading all your comments <laughs> Celestine is like are those figures in the background yes it's all my all my uh, anime it's all my anime husband no figures <laughs> Gerald says, uh, thanks for the gifts of Caribbean Cosplay Championship. Yes, yes, you're you're the one who got my uh, my prize. Yeah, sorry for the delay in shipping, but I hope that you can get a lot of use out of them. Thank you so much for being here. And yee, so uh, wishing you guys very creative weekend. Go to Joanne, <laughs> hoard those coupons. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. But thank you so much. I don't know how to end the